National pride will take center stage tonight in Florida as the U.S. under-17 national team squares off with France's under-17s, all part of the 2011 Nike International Friendlies on Fox Soccer. We welcome you to the Premier Sports Campus here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida, alongside former U.S. National Team center back Jimmy Conrad. My name is Mark Rogan, Dino and Jimmy. We come here to Florida with an opportunity to take a look at some names and some faces that could be big players for the senior national team one day. I wish they had this tournament when I was a kid. I mean, to be able to compete against other peers in your age group is amazing. And to do it in front of coaches that make the decisions about whether you're on the national team, even better. So this is a great event. I'm happy to be a part of it. Now, there's no question that this is a stepping stone for many players that one day will have aspirations, maybe playing in a World Cup, but being part of the senior national team. Well, I mean, the residency program has pushed out 300 guys, gone through it. 100 guys have become professionals. So we know the residency program is working, most notably Landon Donovan, Demarcus Beasley, Haguchi Onwayu, names you're familiar with. Now, hopefully after tonight and this whole week, we'll have more names that we're excited about moving forward. Uh, no question, some big names there in U.S. soccer and guys that you lined up against during your illustrious national team career. Let's shift the focus for a moment to head coach Wilmer Cabrera. He's got a little bit of a tough task. Wants to get results while he's here, but also has to prepare players for the future. I'm okay with him not getting results. For one, for me, the only thing that matters is developing players. That's his job. That's his primary focus. He's got to scout them. He's got to develop them. Then he's got to pass them on to Jurgen Klinsmann to do the job at the national team level. Tonight's matchup against France is the first of three here for the U.S. Under-17 national team. Friday, they will take on Turkey, a team that lost earlier today, one nothing against Brazil. And then Sunday, what could be a huge matchup on Sunday evening here in the Florida area, a 5 p.m. Eastern time start time, the U.S. against Brazil, again, right here on Fox Soccer for all three of those games. All right, when we come back, we'll get you the starting lineups and the kickoff. The U.S. and France met a month ago in Paris. The stat sheets were nearly identical across the board, except in goals. A 3-0 win for France. Maybe some payback tonight. Located just about an hour south of Tampa, Florida. We're here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida for the Nike International Friendlies here in 2011. Happy to have you along here on Fox Soccer as we bring you inside of the Premier Sports Campus. Let's look at the starting 11 for what we'll call the home side. Wilmer Cabrera's 11 here for the USA. Yeah, it's a 4-4-2 formation, pretty standard. This is how uh, Wilmer Cabrera likes to play. For me, the two guys I'd like to highlight are Paul Christensen and Goal. He's gonna have to make some big saves. He's the most vocal guy on the team, and they're gonna need him to, to stay. France has got a powerful attack, so he's gonna have to make some big saves. And then on the French side, it starts with Nchamb. He's the guy. He's the men amongst boys. He was the top player when these guys played a month ago. And uh, I expect a big game from him. So it's going to be a big point of emphasis for the U.S. to, to slow that guy down. Uh, and Chong will provide the ball up top, holding it in the midfield, but also provide it up top for Michel Arai, who scored the game winner in that 3-0 loss for the U.S. about a month ago. There's Wilmer Cabrera, the 44-year-old Colombian. He has been in charge uh, just over four years now. Took over in October of 2007 and he's done a fine job so far with the u.s under 17 national team he'll have his work cut out for him though here tonight jimmy conrad former u.s national team center back and mls all-star mark rogandino the rest of our fox soccer crew that is our referee mark dick who will oversee the match here in lakewood ranch florida he's joined by desmond miller and babakar giallo as the assistant referees and your fourth referee tonight is Baldomero Toledo. As you can hear from our field mics, a bit of a breeze whipping through here at the Premier Sports Campus. And it actually will not really favor either team to open the half. And we're underway here in the first half, the first of three for both of these two under 17 national teams. It'll be France attacking from right to left across your screen in the dark blue tops red socks and white shorts while the u.s under 17 side will come out with the white tops and white socks and dark blue shorts they defend the goal to jimmy and my left should be an interesting start to the game mark if only because one month ago u.s lost three to nothing maybe in a game that really wasn't indicative of the score it was a little bit more even but it'll be interesting to see how that affects them and how they respond to getting beat, beaten up in Paris last month. Well, as I mentioned, going out to the last commercial break, the stat sheet was nearly identical for both teams. Uh, shots overall, one better for France, uh, 11 to 10. Uh, shots on goal, one better for France. Even saves and, and fouls were fairly even across the board, but it was just as a matter of putting the ball in the back of the net where the U.S. fell behind. 
They fell behind just in the opening quarter of an hour. And uh, we were talking to Wilmer Cabrera and some of his staff yesterday, and they mentioned they had some chances. They just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, and then all of a sudden they found themselves down one nothing, 2 nothing. So obviously they have a little bit of a game plan to put in play here tonight against a team that they've already faced. Ball pops loose here. Flores trying to drive the attack. Now forward for DeAndre Robinson. Can't maintain the possession for the U.S. And a clearance out towards midfield here for France. You can hear the voice of Paul Christensen. And as Jimmy mentioned, he'll have to come up with some big saves tonight. It would actually also be very interesting to see, Jimmy, how France react. Uh, they didn't arrive until late yesterday, missing their plane flight. In fact, not missing it, but it was canceled to come out here to the east coast of the United States. So the time crunch in terms of their travel may be applying a little bit of pressure. I think that'll get out of their legs in the first five or ten minutes, but it could have an impact. And I actually like what the U.S. is doing right now. They're pressing pretty high up the field, making things a little bit difficult on France. Maybe they know that they had a long flight, maybe they didn't, but uh, already a good bright start for the U.S. And, and I think France just needs to weather that storm and, and get in their groove and find a rhythm. I mentioned the win, and as I said, you can hear it a little bit. Some of our field mics picking it up. It's probably slightly at the back of the U.S. here in the first half. So any ball lofted forward in the air might carry just a couple extra yards in this first half for the red, white, and blue. Connor Donovan coming over the back to try and win the ball, and he's whistled for the foul. Donovan, the oldest player on this roster. All players born in 96, but Connor Donovan is the oldest of the bunch. Good physical player, Connor Donovan. He's the imposing center back that I like to fancy myself when I used to play, Mark. And, uh, you know, he's a big, big part of this U.S. team. He's the leader. He's got to keep everybody organized. And how he plays today is going to be indicative if they win the game or not. On cue, there is Connor Donovan trying to clear the ball from right at the top of the U.S.'s defensive third. Angel Heredia pushing it forward. And Chom, that's the player that you mentioned when we looked at the lineups. We'll see how he can hold the ball in the middle. Meanwhile, it's the Yanks on the counter-attacking option here. Robinson isolated out wide. Didn't finish that play very well, but I like Herbert Flores, number 10, our playmaker for the U.S. Gets the ball in a good position, gets the ball running at their defense, plays the ball wide, and gives it out to DeAndre Robinson, who I want in that situation. I want him to go 1v1. I don't, I don't mind that he flubbed the cross. I just want him to have the confidence to be in that position and try it again. Robinson brings a great element of speed to the equation here for this under-17 side. So if he gets the opportunity to get isolated out wide versus a defender, look for him to do the most with it. This time it's an entry pass here for Wesley Wade. He's the other strike partner up top here for Robinson. Good connection here for the U.S. as they string some passes all the way across to the near side of the field. Headed a couple step overs to create some space. Bending shot off of the left foot of Rubio Rubin, but right in the gloves of Dorian Grange. Good break from the U.S. Take a look here. Good shot from Heredia, the captain. It's letting, setting the tone early, letting France know that this isn't going to be an easy game. U.S. under-17 is participating in the Nike International Friendlies for the ninth time. While France come here for the first time. Jonathan Bamba, product of uh, St. Etienne on the ball to put it back in play here for France. Into the corner, Coman. Good defending there from Riquejo Jr. He's able to get enough of a touch to clear it out. France trying to get themselves in behind the back four. Not a bad cross, but just over the head of Cornet. Another counter-attacking sequence here for the U.S. 
Heredia trying to push that ball through. Six minutes and change into the first half. We showed you Wilmer Cabrera on one side. Patrick Gonfalone on the other side. And uh, Gonfalone has really gone with this age group, this 96 group for France up the table. He was the coach of the under 15 side for the last couple of years and taking these players now to the next step. Ruben, looking back inside, cleared away by Koulibaly. See if the U.S. can get a second chance out of it. Good interchange there from Flores. And Rubio Ruben on that far side. Couldn't quite get the cross in, though. Here's that pressure you were talking about, Jimmy, as they win it about 35 yards out from goal, but can't maintain possession. The U.S. has done a good job. The pressure, their shape, their team shape, they're collapsing on the ball in the middle of midfield has been excellent. Nearly a giveaway. And then Connor Donovan has to come in and clear it, but not before we see the first yellow card, John Requejo Jr. Out of Carpinteria, California, will be the first to go into the book tonight. Yeah, lucky there, ball. Kind of a short pass. Requejo has to make the decision there. It's going to end up being a 1v1 situation. Kind of a late tackle there. You can see it. Connor Donovan in a good position to clear it. But Requejo up over the ball. It's going to be an easy foul to call, but good decision by him. Break up the play. Get everybody back behind the ball to defend the set piece. Well, the initial giveaway was not the cleanest there from the U.S., but as you said, able to kind of break things up to allow themselves to get back defensively now and defend this set piece. Bamba chips it forward. Here comes Christensen with the punch at the top of the area, upended for a moment. And no initial second chance opportunity for France. ball tackled away at the last moment by Requejo Jr. On the flip side, France, great pressure on the ball there, which leads to that chance. Good cross in front of goal. Good clearance by Requejo Jr. Again, good positioning. Good start to this game. Both teams look bright and have a lot of good energy. And I think they're good immediate pressures, what's creating a lot of chances for both sides. Another throw here coming up for France. Well, one of the things uh, in our discussion with Wilmer Cabrera, the head coach for the U.S., told us yesterday that his team got under pressure as the match wore on in the first half. You can almost see that unfolding a little bit here in the opening minutes of this one. I'm not sure how much he wants his team just to rely on counters. And that's where the pressure comes in. And the higher up they can be up the field, but then they can win the ball closer to France's goal. And that's going to save them a lot of energy and put them in good spots to make stuff happen. Here's the speed of DeAndre Robinson. Tries to push it in early there for Wesley Wade. Still alive, though. Moore with the lofted ball toward the back post, but too much air underneath, and it drifts out. Shaquille Moore does great there to step up, win the ball. Takes a great first touch by two French defenders. Just unlucky not to finish with a better cross. Here, take another look. Good early cross there from Robinson. Good step up there from Moore. Again, it's all positioning. Good starting positions. End up creating a lot of good attacks. Bombo with the throw to put it back in here for France. Malpe. Nice diagonal ball to try and spring the attack for France, but picked out at the back by Moore. showed the lineup, Jimmy, is a really a, a version of a 4-4-2 for France, but it seems like already in the early going that Cornet, the left midfielder, pushes up into that space, almost creating a third attacker. Yeah, it, it seems to be drifting more into a 4-3-3, and that's something the U.S. probably is prepared for since they played this team recently, but, uh, you know, creates a lot of different opportunities for them, different angles when they're attacking, and allows them to pressure to get around the ball. So, like I said early, game's been pretty even. Some good soccer being played. And uh, hopefully we'll see more of it continue. Hard tackle there from Dumbia as he upends the U.S.'s number 10, Junior Flores. Take a look. Get touched by Flores. 
just got run into by a guy who probably weighs twice as much as he does, Mark. I thought that was one of the interesting things <laughs> in, in, in the discussion with, with Wilmer Cabrera that you got into with him yesterday was, as we see Flores being attended to by the, the U.S. training staff, just the difference, not only with some of these French players, how much bigger they are than some of the U.S. players, but at this level in the U-17, you sometimes just can't recognize as a young player how much physicality is a part of the game. No, you make a good point, and some of these French guys, I think, are a little bit more developed than some of ours, but you know, that's part of the challenge. Wilmer Cabrera, we had a great conversation with him yesterday. He says he wants to play in tough games. He wants to be exposed by some of the top youth teams in the world so that their, our players can learn from the mistakes and learn how to what it means to be against one of the top top teams in the world. I, I know for me it was it was just eye opening to hear him use that word exposed. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you, but I love it. I, I became a big fan of Wilmer Cabrera after our conversation because he wants to test our guys. He wants them to become better soccer players and the only way you do that is by playing against the best. And Cabrera knows a thing or two about playing in tough competition. Played in Colombia, Argentina, Costa Rica, 48 caps with the Colombian national team, two World Cups. So certainly it carries a lot of weight when it comes out of his mouth. France trying to build up from midfield here. Heredia with the tackle there, but the U.S. cannot win the possession. Moore comes in, and now the ball slips out wide here for Cornet. Connor Donovan matching up out there defensively. Secondary help comes inside from Tyler Turner. You can hear the voice of Paul Christensen, and that is something that is a, a great asset for this U.S. team. I mean, the coach has also noted about Paul Christensen is that he's one of the players they can trust. You know, they know what he, they, he's going to get from him game in and game out. And I think at the U-17 level, that consistency is unheard of, you know. So I know he's a key for them, and, and how he performs today is going to go a long way yeah. to seeing if the U.S. wins this game. In other words, we're, we're trustworthy, effective, uh, solid decision-making, all things you want for not only just the goalkeeper players across the board, but when you have that for a goalkeeper, you know he's going to be steady. I think that's what these two say about me. At least that's what I hope these to say about me. I thought you were going to say that about me. No, sorry. <laughs> this is about me, Mark. This whole thing. 13 and a half minutes gone out here at the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Scoreless so far between the U.S. and France. Space out wide if Angel Heredia wants to use it. Tough ball there for Robinson to handle as it was bouncing up about waist high. That pass is actually a good example, Mark, of what we're not doing, if, speaking as a U.S. fan. They need to play a little bit more side to side, be a little bit more patient, and wait for gaps to open. It seems like every time we get it, we're looking to play forward as soon as possible, and, and that's fine. I'm glad we're looking to do that, but there are times where you have to put your foot on the ball and wait for stuff to happen, and uh, I think if we add a little bit more of that, that'll ultimately give some space to Wade and Robinson up top to do their thing. So if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying there, he doesn't need to play that pass forward. Directly. No, 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 no. He actually had some time to play some other guys and maybe create different angles for some of his teammates. Cornet comes in onto his right foot, but doesn't get a lot behind the shot that ends up in the gloves of Paul Christensen. Take a look here. Cornet. Does well to create some space, doesn't get a lot on it. I'm sure he regrets not picking the corner, but Christensen makes a good, easy save. Headed away by Senzemba. Good initial ball there from Flores to spray it out wide. Gets it back, looking for some help, pushed down from behind. There's the tackle from Jules and Chum. Bamba skips it forward, headed right back in there by Kabala. <laughs> U.S. with some high pressure here in France's end, uh, forcing the ball out. We were talking about physicality a moment ago. We'll see plenty of that here this evening. Good clean tackle there. I think Herber knows it. Didn't have much to complain about. Cleared away by Rubio Rubin. Hey, Rubio, pitch in. This is the time of the game, Mark, where things start, there's a little bit of a lull. Things are going to start to stretch out. Maybe don't have the same kind of energy and excitement. 
enthusiasm to close things down. I think we're going to see some better chances now. We're going to see which team has a little bit more tactical discipline in creating space and making things happen. Christensen out to the edge of his six to pull it in. And you see uh, the Seattle Sounders youth product pushing the U.S. under 17s forward. We know that Wilmer Cabrera encourages his team to try and play out of the back, but obviously, as he told us yesterday, they'll pick and choose their moments against a team like France. All the way forward, France able to handle it. A reminder for you, our coverage of the Nike International Friendlies will continue on Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, live on Fox Soccer. This U.S. team will turn its attention to Turkey, a team that were dealt a loss by Brazil earlier today in the opening game for all four teams as part of the Nike International Friendlies. Join us again on Fox Soccer, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. It's the U.S. and Turkey. Ball skips past Moore, but he's able to use his speed to recover to slow down Cornet on the attack. I think France is doing a great job of getting Ma Pei the ball in front of our U.S.'s back four. Just having a tough time getting that ball wide. If they can get that ball wide and get Cornet running it more, then I think they're going to have a lot of success, and they have to continue to look for that. Take a look at the foul. Way doing what he does best. He's being a pesty forward. The U.S. pick up the ball in the midfield. Flores off leading the charge. Lays it into the space for Robinson. Right idea, right? Wanted to play it early onto the back post, but just a little too heavy. A little too heavy. I don't think he picked up his head to see where Wade was at. I think Wade was waiting for him to take one more touch before he got into position. So I think DeAndre Robinson's going to want that back. Here, another good ball from Herbert Flores. Really been pulling the strings in midfield. And that's a decision DeAndre Robinson decided to make. Obviously the wrong one, but as a young player, and especially from Wilmer Cabrera's perspective, you want your guys to make decisions. And when they make decisions, then you can correct those. But if they have indecision or are not doing anything or playing safe, there's not much you can do to help correct. France quickly coming back the other way now. Entry pass, Mape with the opportunity. France will line up their first corner of the game. Michel Arai trots over to deliver the corner here for France. Lining numbers up at the top of the 18. Driven in that direction, ball comes all the way through. Mape with the chance. And his volley goes a couple yards over the crossbar. It looked like a set piece from a set piece. Really you know, did. Well, yeah, he hits one top of the box. A couple dummies, falls to Mape, who may or may not have been ready for it. Hits it pretty good, just got to stay over it. Put that on frame, make Christensen make a save. Just about 20 minutes gone here in the first half. More. Through Heredia, all the way for Flores, and now out wide. France able to slow up the attack for the U.S. And they quickly take out here for Cornet. Good closing down there from Moore. France able to work out of some tight space. Cornet pushing it in toward the end line. Able to get in behind Connor Donovan. Entry pass onto the back post and cleared out by the U.S. defense. They'll concede the corner, but it could have been much worse. Fantastic play by France down the sideline to get this opportunity. Cornet being the catalyst for that. Great ball, picks out the charm. Great save by Tyler Turner for the U.S. off the line. Now just a simple corner kick out of that whole play, out of that whole melee. All France gets is this corner kick. Chom had a great look and a chance to bury one in an open net. 
The ensuing corner cleared away by the U.S. Jules and Chom gives chase and wins it there for France. But the U.S. battle back with a clearance out toward midfield. Good help defending there from Heredia. Quickly in for Malpe, touches it onto his right foot. He's got help out wide, but closing speed from Turner to take it away for the U.S. Another good defensive play by Tyler Turner. Good entry pass, good run. Wesley Wade forward for Flores, tries to chop it back toward the top of the 18. And the U.S. will have their first look at a corner here in the opening half. Like the defender's dream there, Mark. Tyler Turner steals the ball, plays the forward, keeps running in the box. Always licking my chops when that happened. He'll take another look at it. Wes Wade, he's it into Herbert Flores. Does the right thing, tries to cut back against the grain, gets a corner kick. Secondary ball delivered onto the back post. Follow-up chance here for Flores. The red, white, and blue making claims for a handball. But Mark DeCluy does not respond. The chance back the other way, snuffed out there by John Requejo Jr. Great position by Requejo. Little shock that Tyler Turner let that ball bounce. Let's give Cornet a chance at the ball. Good position by him. Good game so far, Mark. Guy Kabala, quick to get it off his feet. Good movement with the ball here for the U.S. under 17. Splitting pass into the feet of DeAndre Robinson. Trying to push it forward for Wesley Wade. Robinson dumps it off there for Heredia. Quick feet to get out of some space. Back in for Robinson, trying to get it onto his right foot. Not a lot doing there, so he sends it out wide here for Wade. From the corner, swinging it all the way across to the back post. Ruben back out top. Couldn't quite find the contact on the left foot. Great sequence by the U.S. Good pressure, way to hold it in. Good cross from Wade. Still like to see a few more runners in the box. Not just Herbert Flores back post. We need Wade and DeAndre Robinson near the goal, causing some pressure on the French goalkeeper. France don't have the numbers going forward. Still creating a chance through Neil Maffe, but the handball against the youngster will give the U.S. back the ball. <laughs> and the U.S. have taken a lead. Quickly from one end to the other, and Robinson finds the game's first goal. Another good ball from Herbert Flores. He looked up, he had five guys. DeAndre Robinson takes a good first touch, does exactly what to do. Upper 90. Thank you very much. One nothing to the U.S. Great finish. Now one of the notes on DeAndre Robinson was he's always looking to score. I tell you what, Jimmy, he didn't have much of an angle right there, but if you put it in that spot, it's going to be tough for any keeper to get a touch to it. DeAndre Robinson opens the scoring for the U.S. as they take a 1-0 lead. Before he actually took the shot, I almost opened my mouth to say they were two versus six. Don't shoot, don't shoot. But uh, he proved me wrong and finally put the French goalkeeper to work. He had to work, putting the, picking the ball out of the back of his <laughs> net. That's still work, however you slice it. For France, this will uh, this will be the first time that this group, at least in this age bracket, have faced a bit of adversity. Uh, like the U.S., this French under-17 side coming together in late August to begin this quote-unquote cycle, but they have yet to taste defeat 
since becoming officially France's under-17 side. And in fact, coming off of uh, three big wins in European Championship first round qualification for UEFA. Based on the recent results, Mark, I fully expect them to get, find a way back into this game. I don't expect them to be shut out at all. It's going to be on Paul Christensen to make some big saves, like I said at the start of the broadcast. But I'm really curious to see these next five minutes for the U.S. They've been vulnerable in certain games, having a little bit of a letdown, feeling like they've accomplished something. For them, they got to keep their foot on the pedal, continue to push, continue to have good pressure and good team shape. Maybe they'll find themselves with a second goal. Flores comes in underneath to win it back here for the U.S. Good read there from Neil Malpe to win it for France. Quickly out wide. Coman will give chase. Cannot hold it, though. Moore steps in to push it away. Counter-attacking chance again here for the U.S. Flores leading four against three. Sucks in a couple of defenders. Robinson from a similar spot. This time actually looking to combine centrally with Wesley Wade, and he tries to recover the ball and earns a free kick here for the U.S. Take a look. Another good early shot from D.I.J. Robinson. Trying to be positive, positive thinking. Gets himself in front of the French player. Takes the foul. But for me, the catalyst, everybody pulling the strings right now, is Herbert Flores for the U.S. Continues to pick up the ball in front of the French back four, and that's the reason for the U.S. success. Every time he gets it, he, t he always makes the right decision. He tries to find Wade or DeAndre Robinson into space, and it's usually ended up into something positive. We watched this U.S. under-17 team working on free kick chances, and Angel Heredia was at the majority of most of them. This time, he leaves it for the player you were just talking about, Flores. But his right-footed effort directly into the wall. The French look a little bit shaken right now. They seemed a little bit out of sorts. Mape, who I think is their version of Herbert Flores, needs to find the ball a little bit more, make, make crisper passes. I think he gets on it and continues to make good decisions with the ball and the French will find themselves having some good opportunities. You see uh, Wilmer Cabrera spends the majority of the time up right there in the corner of the technical area. Very much uh, hands-on. In fact, he, was, he had the ball at his feet dribbling against players on this U.S. under-17 side in training yesterday. And here's another uh, situation that we saw in training yesterday where the U.S. setting up these free kicks from this side. Good educated left foot of Heredia out of San Jose, California. More often than not was the player we saw driving the service here. It will be Heredia, just doesn't get enough air underneath it. Easily defended there by France. And now the counter-attacking chance back the other way. U.S. able to get numbers back to disrupt things. Dumbia. Sends it out wide. Come on. Connor Donovan with a stick tackle there to push the ball away. Flores comes in as the secondary defender, and he's off and running once again. Wade. Space here for Ruben. Moore with the attacking run up the right side. U.S. with a good buildup all the way to about 30 yards out from the France goal, but the final touch not there. A great, good string of passes from the U.S. Finishing with their right back overlapping, Shaquille Moore. But the French, Neil Mappé, has got to get more involved. He's got to make decisions quicker. He's trying to do too much, trying to take too many guys on. Just play simple. That's what's going to get, get French some success. Senzemba 
coming forward from the left back spot, drives it in, but it's deflected out off of Connor Donovan in a throw here for France with a little less than a quarter of an hour remaining here in the first half. Christensen will call it, and he'll gather it in at the edge of the six. So far, living up to uh, everything that Wilmer Cabrera said about him. Paul Christensen in goal. Slip through here for Flores. Trying to cut it back, does twice. And then a right-footed shot deflected out by France's defense. It'll come to the corner. A little bit of bite there from Flores as he comes in hard with the tackle to earn the U.S. a throw. Take a look here, Herbert Flores. Good composure on the ball. Takes a good shot. Continues on his play. We see a lot of young players sometimes give up after they lose the ball. There he lays a nice tackle on the sideline and retains possession for the U.S. France will look for a counter of their own. Great, great ball by Cornet. Christensen going to have to come out off of his line, but the offside flag had already gone up against Michel Aray. Great outlet out to Cornet. Makes a great pass into Mampe, who tries it one time at his offsides, but good indication of what France is capable of. Their timing's a little bit off. They don't seem to be playing as quick as they can. And maybe that's due to the long flight, Mark. I'm not sure. Jimmy, uh, we've already touched on the exposure factor and, and Wilmer Cabrera talking about his team being exposed to learn from their mistakes. But I think another word, buzzword, if you will, that he used yesterday was reactionary. From the 33 minutes now we've seen here in this first half, how do you feel? Is the team you know, taking it to France or are they reacting to what France is doing? No, I actually think they've done a good job of being the aggressor and forcing France into certain areas where they have numbers. And I haven't seen too much reactionary stuff. Maybe in the last five, 10 minutes, France has gotten a couple opportunities when they're a little bit stretched out. Then you can see the reacting, having to cover and do all that good stuff. But, but for the most part, they've looked good. They've looked sharp. And they look like the team that wants to win. Okay, a little bit of contact inside the area. And immediately the AR on the far side raised the flag to indicate there was some contact to give France a free kick. We'll take a look. Ooh, just outside, right? Yeah. Just grabbed his hand. Okay, does well to get back behind the defense. Again, he's their, he's their guy. He's their linchpin. He needs to get in and around the ball. Now he just needs to make better, quicker decisions. But here he draws a dangerous free kick for France. And the U.S. has to be wary of the size of the French players. Literally inches outside of the edge of the 18-yard box. Malpe, a product of Nice, who has been creating a lot of chances for France so far here in almost 35 minutes. He will make his way just to the edge of the 18 and give way to one of his teammates to put the ball back in play. Three in the wall in the near post, driven across, looking for the far post on his own. I think Cornet maybe could have made a different decision there. He's got a lot of numbers in a dangerous area, six, seven yards away from goal, based on where the wall was. I think you just drive that hard and low and maybe hope for a deflection to get to the back of the net. But for him to take a shot there, that kind of angle, doesn't make too much sense. Steps in to pick up the possession here for the U.S. Plenty of space here, and Moore lets it fly off the crossbar. <laughs> Nearly doubling the lead for the red, white, and blue. Their chance is still alive here. As the possession continues, Rubio Ruben. Back comes France. Arai with some numbers inside the area as the cross falls into the space. Dumbia looking for the window maybe to pull the trigger. Good diagonal ball. Cornet out wide. 
Cuts it back onto his left foot. Great lead for the top of the 18, but nobody home for Le Bleuet. See here, Mark, last two, three, four minutes. Game's opened up, starting to go a little more end to end, which makes this more entertaining for us sitting up here. I, 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 absolutely, you're not seeing a lot of uh, dictating the possession in the central midfield. You're seeing teams just open things up at both ends. Let's go back and look at that last chance for the U.S. Cam Moore almost making it 2-0. Uh, he makes a great decision. I mean, the defenders are dropping off, so he picks the right answer for him. Takes a good shot. Just unlucky he doesn't go in, hits the crossbar, and you know, West Wade is just two steps away from tapping that in, but great opportunity for the U.S. Nice dip on the right foot there of Moore out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Late whistle will come in and give the U.S. a free kick after a hard challenge upending. I think it was Angel Heredia on the other side. No, my bad. It was uh, John Raquejo Jr. I've actually been impressed with John Raquejo and Shaquille Moore tonight. Doing a great job doing their work defensively, but getting forward and picking their spots, keeping the pressure high, and really su supporting their midfielders to take more risks. As they push up, and the midfielders can push up, the forwards can be in a higher position, and that just creates a lot of chances. Wade getting himself into a high position there. Couldn't quite push the cross to the center part of the field. Series of one-touch balls. Quickly push the ball forward now here for France. Cornet headed away there by Moore, doing it both ends so far here tonight in the first half. Zemba. Robinson has the lone goal in the match so far. Wide here for Wade into the space, but it was too far out in front. And Junior Flores anyway, the offside flag had come up and no need for the whistle. Flores opening the hip to bring it across to his right foot, pushed away by Senzemba. Some good numbers to counter here and some space now for France. Aray will send it in and ahead of everyone into the gloves of Paul Christensen. Right when that ball goes wide, it's 4v4. And the France guy lets the U.S. off the hook by hitting it in an early cross. He's in a great position to actually do something, take somebody on, commit somebody from the U.S. defense to come over, maybe help cover, and create space for another teammate. Again, a little bit of impatience, I think, from the French team that's really limiting their opportunities in, in and around goal and really testing Paul Christensen in the U.S. goal. Well, as I mentioned here in the first half, Jimmy, there has to be a little bit of sense of anxiousness and, and some, uh, you know, feelings that they haven't really felt for France because they haven't really had to play from behind too much. This is a group that, at least in this cycle, is under 17s, have not tasted defeat. They've had a lot of success coming off of three shutout wins in UEFA under 17 qualifying. I think this is what head coach from France, Patrick Gonfalon, has to take into account as he heads into halftime. I think we're going to see some adjustments. We'll probably see some subs. You know, obviously going to be some tired legs having that canceled flight, long flight, time change, all that stuff that's factored in for the French team right now. And when that happens, then the U.S. is going to have to to use your expression from earlier, have to react and make adjustments of their own to continue to have the good pressure they've had this whole game. But considering the way that things went the last time these teams met a month ago in Paris, a 3-0 win, and it was actually 2-0 at the half for France, it should be a pretty good mental victory for the U.S. to just, you know, get out of this half and take a 1-0 lead into the break. Absolutely, you know, and actually one of the things that Wilmer Cabrera spoke about at our meeting yesterday was that he thinks the U.S., just the, our culture in general, does better in the underdog situation when we're down a goal. He thinks that we have a harder time when we're leading. So it'll be interesting to see if he touches upon that at halftime and, and 
you know, if they continue to have the same kind of energy they've shown in this first half. And to continue on that point, this is everything in this first half, what he was talking about, the U.S., what he'd like to see them take the next step and do is, is say, we are playing at home, we're gonna take it to the other team first. And that's what this U.S. team has done here in the first half. And which is great, and now the next step is, can they manage the game? Can they kill it? Can they kill it off? Can they play in the corners? Can they keep possession? Can they tire the French team out? They make it seem like there's only one team on the field. So far, they've been pretty good. But I want to see if they can do it again in the second half. About three and a half minutes from the end of regulation here in the first half. And Chom wins it back now for France. Sprays it out wide, Coman. And Chom again. A little too detailed there as he touches it out. They'll give the U.S. a throw deep in their own end. Three minutes from the end of this first half, probably plus a minute or two of stoppage time to close things out here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida for this first half. Make sure you stick with us during halftime. Jimmy and I uh, touched on it a little bit to open the broadcast about how things are unfolding with the Development Academy. Now in its fifth season, the U.S. Soccer Development Academy. Chance here to equalize, and France will do it before the break. Arai from just on the edge of the 18, and he slips it past Christensen to bring us level at one. Great ball here from Coman. Right into the path of Cornet, who hits a good first time ball over to Arai. Picks his spot. Nothing Christensen could do. Good finish here, see? Good one touch play all the way through from the French. Started all the way in the back. That's where it ended up. But devastating for the U.S. to give up a goal right before halftime, especially since the ball was in the back. Went through three, four, five, six players, all three lines of defense, and ends up with a one-on-one -on -one with our goalkeeper. Not the best result here. We are being told uh, one minute of stoppage time to close out the first half. <laughs> Robinson pushes into the space. Ruben, chance for Flores! And it'll go just wide off of the side netting. And you can see the fans behind thought it had zipped into the corner. Great response from the U.S. Herbert Flores gets it off his feet, tries to hit it in the same spot DeAndre Robinson scored in. But actually, very same similar play to how French just scored two minutes earlier. Good one-touch passing, good runs out of midfield and unlucky not to find the back of the net. Almost looked as though uh, Dorian Grange, the goalkeeper for France, might have gotten a slight touch to it to push it wide. Either way, it was ruled a goal kick. France with another wave of attack here as they've gotten strong in these last three or four minutes, including the goal. Offside flag comes up, and as I was saying, make sure you stick with us during halftime. In addition to taking a look at both of the goals from this opening half of play here in Florida, we'll also get an opportunity to bring you a spe very special guest that will join us up here in our broadcast position heading into the second half. Give him a hint who the special guest is halftime. <laughs> I think people just assume it's me. See in TV, that's what we call a tease. <laughs> I'm still getting familiar with all the lingo. I'll tell you what, I'll give, I'll give him one hint. Captain America. I'm sitting right next to you. One minute of stoppage time to close out this first half. USA won, France won here at the Nike International Friendlies. Or maybe that's just me that calls myself Captain America. His daughter probably calls him Captain America, right? <laughs> Connor Donovan rising up to get a piece of it, to head it for a moment there for the U.S. And now Rakejo Jr. will just send it the length of the field. Robinson giving chase though, making things difficult at the back there for Koulibaly. 
Moore. Moving to push it into the space toward the end line and maybe get on the end of it. It's the last few seconds. Here to close out the first half. Just awaiting the whistle from Mark DeCluy. And there it is. So Jimmy, uh, a, an opening start that sees the U.S. jump out one nothing, but France find the response just before we hit halftime. Yeah, I mean, it was an exciting first half. Both teams put together two comprehensive performances, but hopefully we'll see more in the second half. We'll talk about it more when we come back. 1-1 at the break. Soccer continues to bring you coverage of the best leagues from around the world. Serie A on Friday, December 2nd, Genoa and AC Milan. And then we move to France for Ligue 1, Olympic Lyon and Toulouse going head to head on Sunday, 2.55 p.m. Eastern time, live in high definition. That one on Fox Soccer Plus. 1-1 is your score here at the half between the U.S. under-17 side and the under-17s from France. We welcome you back here to Lakewood Ranch here in Florida. And as you can see, it has become a three-man booth up here. Jimmy Conrad, Mark Organdino, and pleased to be joined by Captain America, Claudio Reyna. Uh, Claudio, first tell us about being here for this whole week. I mean, there's a lot for you to do. Yeah, there, uh, it's a big week on our calendar at U.S. Soccer, um, besides the Nike Friendlies, which is a great tournament for our under-17s. We have our academy teams here playing at 16s and 18s um, for, you know, four days, and it gives us a good idea to see where they are at the midway point of their season. Some of them are just starting off, so it's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great week for us to get together as staff and, and get a lot accomplished. Now, Claudio... I'm glad you're at the helm of all this. This is a huge undertaking for you. But what, how long can we expect this to, to kick into effect? I mean, we're putting all these thing, good things in place. I know Carlos Quiroz came on and said Project 2010, that we were going to compete for the World Cup in 2010. A bit foolishly, maybe a bit naive, based on the, our size. And this is, I know this is a really long question, but I want to get to is, is there a timeline for it? Or you just say we have to put the right things in place and it'll just develop naturally? Yeah, I think uh, it's hard to put a, an actual date on when we want to see results. Um, look, there's a lot of great work that has been done, that's being done. Um, there's some programming that, uh, that has come into U.S. soccer regarding the academies and some of our youth teams. But I think the focus that, you know, myself and the, the technical people at U.S. soccer need to really focus on now is what's happening on the field, how are we making the players better, and with their best interest always always first and foremost, and, uh, you know, developing uh, really a, a vertical uh, integration from top to bottom, and uh, it's very important. It's very important because it'll help the players develop from year to year and, and that there's consistent messages on how we want to play, how we train both on and off the field, and, and really just raising everything that's been done to a new level. Now, I think... This is something I've been clamoring for for a long time. You're getting everybody on the same page, speaking the same language, and having meaningful dialogue between everybody, referees, coaches, players. How can we make this better? And, you know, kudos to that for, for taking on that. What, what kind of messaging are you giving? Is it coming from Jurgen? Does it come from you? Where does it start, and you know, do you continue to evolve, or is there some set plan that you already have in place? No, you you, you have you have a plan, but it continues to evolve at the same time. And with what Jurgen is uh, mainly responsible for, clearly, is is the national team, and that's that is the most important team in this country. That's what we're all building for at the younger age groups. You know, we want to do better and better at the youth tournaments, but ultimately, we want to provide the senior team with better players. And look, I think the the best way to to improve is um, is to make sure that the coaches the teachers continue to improve and and work together as best as possible in a perfect world we, we we wish we were further ahead with that but i think that's really the emphasis that we can put on is is as as a staff at u.s soccer is to really get more much more out of ourselves as a coaching staff and and the players are the ones that are going to reap the benefits and i think uh we have a lot of good coaches in place you know we've recently added caleb, caleb porter and tab ramos into into the, our, our our coaching staff and they're talented young coaches and uh Again, there's a long way to go, but I do think there's some good things in place. But uh, I really, like I mentioned before, the coaching has to be the, the main emphasis on getting that better. And, you know, on the Development Academy side and even with the national teams, we have to be the leader. It's, we talk a lot about the style of play and how we're trying to play. Um, 
youth soccer games should be entertaining for people who come to a match uh, and watch a youth game. And I think all, all you know too often in the past in recent years, I think youth games have 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 become you know too driven on results. And you see that when you go to a game in minutes. And that's something that as technical advisors and our staff were really aware of to look at and try to emphasize the coaches to keep trying to play a better brand of soccer. Now, I think we've proven. Uh, with our full national team, our youth national teams, that we can compete athletically. Where do you think we have our most or our biggest deficiencies? Is it technical? Is it tactical? Is it a combination of both? What do you think we're really trying to emphasize moving forward? I think uh, it's a combination of our technique still. It needs to improve. Uh, and what I mean by technique, the main number one aspect that I like to, like to look at is our passing and controlling of the ball. I think t too, too often people think dribbling a lot is good technique. And yes, it's important to have that, but just the, the, the being able to control the ball and pass it at, at a high pace is something where we're behind. Um, behind, Just as important, I think, is a little bit of the game awareness and the tactical sense that players have in our country. It's, it's, it definitely can improve. Um, and those are the two main ones, I think. Uh, it's really the whole package. You know, you've kind of touched on it. There's probably still an element of us having to make sure that these players are better prepared to become pros when they get older. And that comes from the coaching staff and and I think former players who've been there and done that, it can tell them what it takes to, to be a top player. And so it's a little bit of everything with the young players. Um, but if I were to pick one thing, really, as a country, it's really the level of our technique in terms of passing the ball, controlling it from different distances and 5, 10 yards from the you know 20 to 30-yard range. We're still behind our, our, our top nations, and that's what we want to catch up to and compete with. Claudio Reyna, former uh, U.S. national team captain, now youth technical director, I understand is the title here with, yeah. uh, with, with the U.S. academies. Uh, give us an idea. I mean, you've had so many accomplishments in your playing career. How does maybe turning to the coaching role kind of fill your passion bucket for the game still? Uh, it, it really does. I mean, uh, it's obviously totally different. Um, you have to look at now really a bigger picture and everything. Uh, you know, as a country where we are um, and, and really building a player up and what it takes and, and you need to have patience with, with these kids, uh, you know, and, and really be a guide to them and, and, you know, not force too much onto them in, in a month or two months. But I think for me, it's, it's really a treat. It's a privilege to be with U.S. soccer and uh you know be a part of what we're doing i think uh I, I try to lead in many ways but we have a lot of good coaches a lot of good people on on our staff and we also know that there's a lot of good coaches around the country now at various academies that we you know the best thing we, we have now is we have a relationship with coaches and clubs that we can have dialogue with and and really work with them on what we're doing what they're doing and and there's a lot of good examples out there so we're we're on our way with some some good examples that we can go to but for me personally it really is a treat to be involved and you know and help these young players aspire to you know better things than we did in our generation that's the goal we have to now sacrifice it's sort of much more selfless as a coach because you're really worried about them you know you can't worry about what you are as a coach more than anything uh, it's, it's difficult sometimes coaches want to want to win and win the trophies and you know but at the end of it you we're doing this for for the players and, and and in this case the young players here to to give them the best chance that when they go to the next level that they're ready um, and that's that's the goal that we need to have I think uh, probably a lot of US soccer fans would want us to thank you not only for your time on the field and, and what you did as a player with with the US men's national team and even what you did overseas finally finishing up with New York in Major League Soccer but now obviously it's going to be great to watch the future and how things unfold with you giving so much of that back to these young players. Yeah, thank you. I, I really enjoy the sort of behind the scenes uh, work that I'm involved in now and again I have to thank so many different people because we have a big staff of people but for me uh, it is it's a treat. Um, very promising young age groups that we have. I recently had the chance to work with the Olympic age group a little bit before Caleb takes that over and that was that was also a lot of fun and uh, I'm a big believer in what we have going on in our country across all fronts on the professional level and the youth level uh, but we can't stop you know there's uh, I've been able to travel around the world and and visit these great nations and federations that are are doing things that we just need to in many ways copy you know there's not it's not a secret sauce or anything that we're, we're gonna develop here we really need to learn from the best nations and what they're doing so I continue to do that and as we all work hard there's a lot of good people in this game um, I think there's a big generation of players as well that have that are finishing up that have finished up that have a lot to offer as well and I think uh, 
you know, the future is really bright for, for this country and for young players in this country. We appreciate you stopping by. We'll let you get back to uh, yeah. what, what you do now as a day-to-day yeah. -day job, and that's Thank wa you. watching talent on the field. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. That is uh, Claudio Reyna, longtime U.S. national team captain, and then now turning over to finding some new talent for the future for the U.S. men's national team and the developmental academies. We appreciate him stopping by. As you can see, uh, there's been some good chances so far here in the opening eight, eight and a half minutes here from France, including this one. Yeah, it's been all France to start of the second half. Moussa Dembele comes on, create a lot of havoc. Unlucky there, Connor. Donovan gets back into the play. Paul Christensen collapse on the play and, and make the save. But warning, a warning sign, if you will, Mark, that the French made some adjustments and they're taking it to the U.S. right now. And no question, uh, Paul Christensen in the U.S. defense. Jimmy has seen as much action in the opening nine minutes of this second half as they saw in the entire opening 45 minutes. And we thought that was going to be an issue. We spoke at halftime, we spoke in the first half, how the U.S. was going to manage this game. And right now, first 10 minutes, it's been all France. Jimmy Conrad, Mark Rogan, Dino, and the rest of our Fox Soccer crew here with you from Lakewood Ranch, Florida, just about uh, an hour south of Tampa. U.S. and France at the under-17 age brackets, even at one apiece early here in the second half. And the U.S. will pick up a free kick as Mikhail Moore is taken down just outside the 18. Another good positive run from Shaquille Moore. He's been very, very active for the U.S., probably one of their best players with Herbert Flores. Just making a big difference and making the French react to them. Right here on the edge of the area. The captain, Heredia, will step up. Whips it in with the left foot onto the back post. A look there for Wesley Way. Moore keeping it alive in the corner of the area. Tries to swing it back across to the back post. I think it was the goalkeeper, Dorian Grange, that got just enough of a touch to initially keep things out as France looked to counter. France, by the way, will now have that win that the U.S. had at their back. So as you can see from that last ball, carrying all the way back to Paul Christensen. Good play by Shaquille Moore to get that back in. Dorian Grange making a good save. In a tough spot. To no avail for the U.S. Official confirmation of your substitution is Musa Dembele coming in to replace Nali Corne to begin this second half as we're a little more than 10 minutes into the second half of play. U.S. with some good pressure from Wesley Wade and they'll earn their first corner of this second half. Applied by Wesley Wade. Make that thankless run into the corner, dig something out, get a corner kick for the U.S. Still like for him to combine a little bit more with DeAndre Robinson. Feel like they maybe connected two or three passes together. Maybe get a little bit closer to each other on the field. And I think they can pull the French center backs out and create a little bit of havoc in the middle of the field and, and near the goal. Short corner this time for the U.S. And Adia with an opportunity to loft it onto the back post. Moore trying to win the ball, and as he tussles for it, against Jules and Cham. A free kick will go in favor of France. Take a look. Lofted ball, back post. Shaquille Moore just being a pest. Cham's like, no, no thanks. Robinson with the good entry pass to try and spring the attack for the U.S. And the ensuing run. Good through ball here. Good defensive play. Akula Bali. Grange. Easy scoop up. 
I didn't initially think that Rubio Rubin was going to get to the ball off the foot of, of Robinson, but he was able to close the space, just couldn't provide a pass onto the back post there for Wesley Wade. See the hard tackle there by Ruben on the other side. And a French player going down. Abdou Diallo, the player still down in France's half. And so the U.S. will touch it out at midfield. In fact, here's the contact I'm talking about. A 50-50 ball. Both guys go unfair. It's usually the guy that pulls up at the last minute that gets hurt. This is since it was Abdul Diallo. That's what shin guards are for, Mark. Not that they ever were. Especially how little they are these days. <laughs> well, talking about letting up, Rubio Rubin never let up at all on that challenge. That's usually the guy that wins. He doesn't feel it. Here, Coman runs at Connor Jackson. Connor Jackson been a physical presence all game. No foul there. Might got tangled up. Might have got his ankle rolled underneath him. Come on, but but a good non-call by the referee. You know, it's interesting that uh, Patrick Gonfalon has decided to take out Cornet after the first half. I thought he was a player that actually created some problems for the U.S. from a wide position. And he was the captain. Right. Yeah. So that might have been a plan sub. You know, bring him in. So, you know, I think for the coach right now, they've had a lot of good momentum starting the second half. If he does have an injury, he's going to have to make a sub. But they've got a deep bench. They've got a lot of guys that played against the U.S. a month ago but didn't play against them or didn't start tonight. So, you know, they're all capable. Like you said, they haven't lost the game, so they all know how to win games. And it'll be interesting to see if, if he makes a sub here or any, if he makes any adjustments. But I like how the French are playing right now, and I don't see them changing too much. Well, it looks like the uh, early indication is that uh, Diallo might be able to continue here. An hour gone at the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. The site of this year's Nike International Friendlies. In addition to these two teams, the U.S. and France, Turkey and Brazil rounding out the four-team field. And for the second consecutive year, there will actually be an actual winner of the Nike International Friendlies when we conclude all the matches on Sunday. Key Kabbalah. Omar Cabrera says he holds the ball better than anyone on the roster in that central midfield. See if he can help dictate a little bit of the tempo in this second half. There he is on the ball. Heavy on the touch. I think he just jinxed him. And a turnover in the midfield. Coman deflected out by the U.S. defense. And cleared out for a throw here for France. Good recovery by Connor Donovan, Tyler Turner to block that shot by Coman. But I think I can count on both hands now how many opportunities the French have had on counterattacks when their number's up or number's even. They just haven't got something out of them. So something that the U.S. team will have to address whether it's in this game or, or watching the video and trying to address it for the games against Turkey and Brazil. Clearance here from the U.S. to spark the count. Flores. Ruben trying to loft it up and over the top, but the wind right in his face. Really taking a lot out of that ball off of the right foot of Rubio Rubin. Little hesitation from Christensen and goal. And Connor Donovan comes back to recover to push it out for a corner here for France. It'll be their fifth of the match and second here in this second half. Good play by Dembele here. He's got great speed. Second half substitute. Good defending here by Connor Donovan, Tyler Turner. Good one-two punch, kind of yin-yang. 
One guy's physical, the other guy does the covering, a little bit more of the sweeper position, at least in that situation from Tyler Turner. They seem to have got it figured out, and they just have to watch the speed of Dembele. They've seen it now, now they just have to maybe drop off him a little bit to counter what he brings to the table. Patrick Gonfalone is gonna go to his bench twice here. Now as we're uh, in the 64th minute of play, a couple of changes for you. We'll get them for you in just a moment. And as the U.S. nod that one out for another corner here for France. Victor Maillard comes in to replace the goal scorer, Michel Aray. And it looks like Abdou Diallo, the player that went down injured a couple of moments ago, is going to be the other player that will go out. Get in. Batu Vincinka will come in. Wait, wait. Connor Donovan heads that one out, but not before the ball had already drifted over the end line. So it'll be a goal kick here for Paul Christensen. Three changes that France has made tonight while uh, Wilmer Cabrera has yet to turn to his bench yet. Serve it across onto the back post, and it'll be another corner here for France, racking them up now. They're third in the last couple minutes, but fourth so far here in the second half. Good sequence by France. Good possession, good player movement. They play, they move, looking for the ball again. It's creating a lot of space in the U.S. defense. They're exploiting it, and I think that the U.S. has got to tighten their lines, got to get some leadership, somebody's got to step up, keep the ball, keep the possession. And take, to, take some pressure off the defense. Right to the heart of the area. Loose ball, and Christensen has to go down to snag it. Take another look at the corner. Good feet first from Christensen to make the save. Near post header. Moves his feet first, gets his hands behind it. Good solid save by the young goalkeeper. The mark now with regard to the subs, I'm actually glad that Wilmer Cabrera isn't making any. They've got three games in six days. They're gonna have plenty of time to use their bench, see different guys. I think this is a good test for his young team to see how they manage the situation. They gave up a, a goal right before half. It's gonna shake them a little bit and see how they figure out a way to win the game, right? We're trying to find guys that know how to win. Not just be good soccer players, but know how to win, and that's that's a valuable component to being a professional. and Ultimately, that's what we're trying to dig out here and try to figure out. Well, Wilmer Cabrera and uh, this U.S. under-17 team hoping that it would come down to maybe producing a win on Sunday against Brazil. That will be the final of the three matches for the U.S. under-17 national team. We'll have it here for you on Fox Soccer beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern time. U.S. and Brazil to close out the Nike International Friendlies in 2011. But Plenty of business to get to first. And uh, at the head of the table is trying to stop France, who have had several waves of attacks coming here in this second half. But the team's still even at one apiece as we near the midway point of this second half. Another good sequence from France. I'm always impressed when they go forward. So every time the ball goes wide, there's always three or four guys in the box. And I think the U.S could do a better job of that. When we get it wide, we seem to have one or two. There doesn't seem to be as much of a commitment to get into a dangerous area. And I applaud the French for doing that, not just once, but time after time after time. Wesley Wade, good pressure to win the ball back. Couldn't hang on to it, though, as Sega Koulibaly came in just to poke it away. And now Mayard, the second half substitute, leading the attack, and he touches it in behind Malpe. Hey, hey, hey. 
U.S. Uh, had a very strong opening 20, 25 minutes, including a goal by DeAndre Robinson in the first half. But slowly but surely, really, Jamie, I think you would agree, since that point, France has started to get the momentum back and really here in the second half, taking control of this game. Yeah, I thought the U.S. had a great chance to extend their lead. We saw Shaquille Moore hit one off the crossbar. That would have made it 2-0. The French were vulnerable for about five or ten minutes after the U.S. made it 1-0. But like you said, they got a little bit of confidence. They found their way back into the game. They scored right before halftime, which changed the com complexion of the halftime talks both coaches had to make. And, you know, that's where we find it. I mean, we find France dominating the game. They're in charge, and now the U.S. is getting hopeful. They're doing hopeful attacks. They're hoping something comes out of something. And, and that's why I'm glad Wilmer, Wilmer Cabrera is doing what he's doing. He's leaving those guys on to figure out and create solutions. Bodies collide at midfield and Rubio Ruben hits the turf. U.S. will get a free kick out of it. And it looks like for the first time tonight, Wilmer Cabrera is looking to his bench. Steven Echevarria getting the chat from his head coach. Some last minute instructions before Echevarria maybe steps on in the next couple minutes. And you can see the weight, the, the wind, excuse me, right in the face of the U.S. as they attack from right to left across your screen in the white jerseys. The wind coming from the left of your screen. And any ball that's flighted or lofted forward by the U.S. just seems to hit a wall. Good step up there from Connor Donovan to regain the possession at midfield. Robinson trying to slip it through for the diagonal run there from West Wade. Wade into the corner. Good early ball, trying to find someone at the top of the 18. France able to clear. Flores backtracking to win it here for the U.S. under 17. Flores return pass into the space, goes shoulder to shoulder on the challenge with Fatou Benzica. Good run of play there from the U.S. Starts with West Wade in the corner. Just something simple, keeping it upright, keeping the ball a little bit, takes some pressure on the defense. Connor Donovan steps up, keeps the pressure on the French. And from that, we're in there. there are, the U.S. is half of the field and starting to create an opportunity. Quickly though, France regained possession. They try and come back with the counter the other way. Ball finds the feet of Tyler Turner. Jimmy, well that, that direct ball might actually work a little bit here because of the win for the U.S. I mean, I know it's not uh, aesthetically what you might want to see always from your team, but because of the win holding it up in front of goalkeeper Dorian Grange, that, that ball might be perfectly into the space for the speed of Robinson and Wade. Well, I think there's an emphasis from the U.S. coaching staff to keep the ball, to play out of the back. Try not to bypass the midfielders. Get them incorporated into what's happening and let them be the guys that make the decisions. You don't want our center backs, as much as I'd like to fancy myself as a closet midfielder, coaches didn't want me to make the game. They wanted the guys that knew how to play to make the game. Not say I didn't know how to play, but, but not in those situations. I saw the game from way back where everything's a little bit easier than it is when it's really tight and pressure filled in the midfield. So, you know, I know that Wilmer Cabrera's put a big, point of emphasis on keeping it plain simple playing out of the back and not just lumping it for lumping its sake so I think yeah at some point if you're down a goal and it's five minutes left sure go ahead lump it play route one but for right now they've got the players to play they've got the speed to do it and once they get into the middle of midfield they can make that that final pass that can break open Wade and, and Robinson and on the goal well, and for these young players it goes back to the dilemma we talked about at the top of the broadcast for Wilmer Cabrera grinding out to try and find results versus playing good soccer and preparing for the future. Offside flag stays down here for Flores. Has Robinson to his left. The shot deflected. It'll stay alive here for Wesley Wade, who keeps it in just before the end line. Little cross onto the back post. The follow-up chance. And miss hit. What an opportunity for Herbert Flores. Simple ball up and over the top. Just unlucky. He had good footwork, did well to get off a shot, but a great save by Dorian Grange. Let's tip our hat to him. Good foot save, plays it wide. U.S. just couldn't capitalize on that opportunity. 
Follow-up chance came off of the right foot of the goal scorer, DeAndre Robinson, but really just didn't connect with it the way he wanted to, and it never gave the French goalkeeper any trouble. Flores again on the ball. The U.S. starting to build a little bit more now over the last couple of minutes. Malpe. Come on, for Maillard in the overlapping run. Good tackle there into the ankles of Maillard. Clearly like the U.S. captain, Angel Heredia, got a piece of it, but he'll pick up a yellow card. Late tackle from Angel Heredia. But the captain makes a good decision. He breaks up the play. I think when he looked over his left shoulder and he's running there, he realizes that French have numbers up going towards his goal. It's unlucky there. I thought he came in hard, but unlucky to give up the free kick. Here we'll take another look at it. Pretty simple touch from Maillard. I don't know if that's a yellow card, personally, Mark. I, I, but being as objective as possible, yes, I, would, I, I would no, I would agree with you. I, it looked like he came. Are you in saying I'm not objective? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm a diehard fan of the U.S. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure that's already come out on the broadcast. What, like you wore the U.S. jersey or <laughs> no, something? No, or not, and I'm not wearing a U.S. jacket right now. Nonetheless, the U.S. will deal with this free kick here for France. Lofted onto the back post and an own goal. It's not even a touch from France. It's a missed touch from the U.S. that ends up in the back of their own net. It's a lofted free kick in a dangerous area. Tyler Turner thinks he's going to hit the outside of his right foot, hits his inner thigh. It's unfortunate there. Ball of good pace forced him to make do something with it. It's really sad, though. There's no French players around, and now we're down. Two to one. I said it. We're down. Yeah, but but I, I, just going back to the objective thing. I mean, maybe that wasn't a foul. Maybe it wasn't even a yellow card. It's just unfortunate that, that play. We're just trying to work hard, break up the play, leads to a goal for the for the French. You know, it's, that's a, a dilemma you see a lot of center backs deal with in every level of soccer across the world. When you're facing your own goal, you really might not know what's behind you, and you either have to try and touch it out or even take the chance of letting it fly through the area. Yeah, and it's, it's going to overshadow a good performance by Tyler Turner. You know, when I had a, an own goal, and I had a few, even if you had the greatest game, that plays the one that will sit with you, not just for that night, maybe for the next couple of games. So especially as a young player, it's really hard to shake off those kind of moments where you feel like you let your team down, as evidenced by that look at him right there, where he just he looks disappointed. But right now, we need him to step up to be a leader. The game's not over yet. There's 15 minutes. We've proven we can get opportunities. 100%. Tyler Turner, the uh, player out of West Haven, Connecticut, and really Warner Cabrera applauds his his ability to organize there at the back. One of the more uh, technical and composed defensive players on the ball for this U.S. Under-17 roster, and just an unfortunate touch there gives France the edge as of right now in the 77th minute of play. So Echeverria does come into the game here to replace Guy Kabala. And Neil Malpe also goes in. As uh, Robin Molon comes in. Wilmer Cabrera touched upon in our meeting yesterday that this is where the U.S does best is when they're down, when they're underdogs. He thinks it's a cultural thing. It'll be interesting to see how the U.S. responds to the disappointment of an own goal and, and basically handing a free goal over to the French. Florida is trying to slip the ball through, but I think it was a handball. And another change coming here for Wilmer Cabrera. Corey Baird will come in as uh, Heredia comes over to the bench. Corey Baird's a forward by trade. He's going to be probably slotted left midfield to start, but I expect him now that the U.S. is down for him to be a little bit more involved going forward trying to help support the other forwards. Maybe even see more of a 4-3-3. Play Guy Kabala was a little bit tired, protected the back four as evidenced by a lot of the French chances. And I think Echeverria will go in there and solidify that a little bit. 
have some fresh legs to make a difference. Step in for the U.S. Here's Baird. Robinson. Play back for Baird, but under some pressure, and France pick it up in the midfield. Moore heads it forward in the direction of Wesley Wade. Be uh, really showing his strength on the ball here as he keeps it alive. He must win it back. DeAndre Robinson dumps it off here for Rakejo Jr. Now Baird. Echeverria. Finally, the ball settles at the feet of Turner. Obviously, Jimmy, no trouble at all for the U.S. to hold on to possession in this part of the field, but what can they do with it when they get to this point? Yeah, they need to do these same kind of things. They need to push up everybody. They need to get Rakejo and Moore up the field a little bit more like they were doing in the first half to get the ball to Herbert Flores a little bit closer to goal so you can find Wade and Robinson a little bit closer. Right now, everybody's 30, 40 yards away. Everybody's doing a lot of running. They're doing a lot of reacting. And that's going to lead to being tired. So when the ball does turn over after you win it, now you're 60 yards away from goal. It's really hard to generate a, an attack against a very good French team who's comfortable with winning, right? They haven't lost a game since they've been together, since they started this two-year World Cup cycle, headed into the U17 World Cup 2013. So, you know, these guys know how to win games. It's going to be a little bit harder to break them down. You can already see them get into their shell. They've got their two lines of forward, midfield, and back. And so it's going to be on the U.S. to take the space that's been given to them, and that's right now they got to push up about 10, 20 yards to start generating some, some real opportunities. Come on. Ah. Robinson dumps it off here for Baird. Just came on a couple moments ago. Echeverria, good opening ball. U.S. finds some space as they bring it out wide. Moore attacking from the right back spot. Gets past the first challenge. Sprays it all the way across here for Robinson. Positive first touch, but he couldn't put it back. On to the back post. Yes, Jimmy, and France has had probably double the amount of scoring chances that the U.S. has had, but it's not like the U.S. have not seen some good looks even here in the second half. Uh, Herbert Flores had a great chance. He got that first touch out of his feet a little bit. Maybe he'd been on goal, but let a defender get back into the play and took away some of his angles. But that being said, he, he got a shot off. Dorian Granger made a great save. And, you know, the U.S. scores there. Obviously, we're talking about a, a different game. But that being said, the French have had a lot of opportunities. They've looked very, very good this second half. And I think this is a little bit more of the French team that we expected once this game started. I think they're a little slow to start in the first half. We took advantage of it. And the U.S. has slowed down in the second half. They're, they're still trying to find their way. And this is a good test for them. Give away from Robinson. Come on. Baird sends it wide now. More. Corey Baird. Up and over the top. Wesley Wade will give chase. And the French keeper Dorian Grange comes out with a clearance. 
Cold weather here in Lakewood Ranch. Actually, it wasn't too bad during the day, but temperatures expected to dip actually down near freezing temperatures tonight before it'll warm up later on in the week. Ball slips through here. Maybe a chance for the U.S. to equalize. Looking for Wesley Wade. Pass doesn't get all the way through, but still alive for a second chance opportunity. Moore cutting it back onto his left foot. Ensuing cross. Flores with the glancing header. Door post. And another chance for the U.S. But a good save from Dorian Grange again. Two back-to-back -back saves. Shaquille Moore puts it in a good area. Good header by Flores. And Wade just put it right where he had to put it. Grange is in the right spot. Hits it off his chest. I don't even know if he, he knew anything about this, but he put himself in a good spot to make that save. And it's standing on his head this second half. Absolutely, he has. A couple more changes coming here. Good look at Boxy Yamba coming in for DeAndre Robinson. Fresh legs, Wilma Cabrera's team. Yamba, the uh, forward out of Georgia. See if maybe he can provide a spark and find an equalizer here in the final few minutes. Donna Samaya also stepped in. My very own Shiva USA Youth Academy for the cramping John Rakejo. France will clear from inside their own 18. Looking for the counter attacking chance, Dombele. U.S. with numbers there to win the ball back. Wade looking for the glancing header to slip it through for Yamba. Amaya. First pass doesn't get all the way through, intended for Flores. Good step in though here. Ruben. Taken down right at the top of the area, and the U.S. are going to get a free kick chance just outside the 18. Good steal of the pass from Rubio Rubin. Maybe he can get off his foot off to the right. Decides to take him inside. Trips up over the ball. Maybe he got bailed out there. I was going to say, you look at the replay, and you and I both smile a little bit. That ball gets caught up underneath his feet, but nonetheless, there was some contact. After he lost, he already lost the ball, but... Merely cosmetic. <laughs> it is, it really is. Why split hairs? <laughs> U.S. has got a good opportunity, chance to tie this game. Though so this goalkeeper, second half, I don't know if they can get anything by him. As we tick into the 87th minute here. Ruben bending it, and it's just over the crossbar. Took a little bit off it to try and have it dip underneath the bar, but couldn't put it on target to force the save. It's like he hit it exactly how he wanted to hit it. He seemed genuinely upset that it didn't go in. But I think at this point, he's got to pick a corner. I was just going to say, still, it, it, the pace seemed pretty good, but really the, the, the placement in the middle of the goal, even if it is underneath the bar, you would expect Dorian Grange to come up with a save there, or at least to tip it over the crossbar. Into the space, Flores trying to turn it on. Feet get tangled up. Feel the sense of urgency here in the cold floor tonight from the U.S. players. I'm curious what that urgency translates into. Mark, it's, you know, does it turn into just us lumping it, hoping for the best, or does it turn into something that the U.S. can really hang their hat on? A really good opportunities, really threat the French goal. Right now, I'm not so sure they have it figured out yet. France looks solid. They know exactly what to do in this situation. They've got the lead, they're comfortable with the lead, and they know how to win games. Flores, Yamba trying to chase it down. Koulibaly is there. Two big, strong, athletic players fighting for possession, and it ends up a throw here for the U.S.
All the way back here for Paul Christensen. Had to hit it first time. Took a little bit of a skip up off the turf. Bayard into the space, tackled out by Tyler Turner. Another huge weapon for the French in this whole process. Now that they're up, they know that the U.S. is going to commit numbers going forward is Dembele. He's probably the fastest guy on the field. And when I was playing, nothing I wanted to see less than Jeff Cunningham waiting for me. Just all speed. When you're down a goal, you know you have to press and I have to mark that guy at 1v1, a full half of the field. So that's a big feather in the cap for the French and something they can utilize and maybe take advantage of as the U.S. presses forward. And even at this point, not even necessarily for Dembele creating a scoring opportunity, right? But just getting the ball, making it tough on the defenders, maybe dribbling into the corner to take time off the clock. Although a goal is nice too. <laughs> yeah, all those things are great. All those things are great. But scoring a goal really put a nail in the coffin for this game. And we'll take a look here. Maybe a handball. No call. Baird, trying to play the long switch to get the ball out wide. Wesley Wade will run it down. Gets it on the return pass for Moore, trying to play quickly into the space for Boxa Yamba. France just ending it with a long clearance back toward the U.S. goal. I'm incredibly impressed that Wesley Wade's still digging it out, picking balls up on the sideline. But at this point in the game, we're in the 90th minute, now we're in the injury time. We need him as high as possible in the center of the field, holding up balls, being in and around goal, to let those other guys do that dirty work. Into stoppage time, and we're being told three minutes of stoppage time to close out this second half. So still time here for the U.S. to try and earn an equalizer. Tyler Turner with the throw now here for the U.S. Under-17 national team it is his touch as an own goal of all things. That is the game winner as of right now for France. Chom releasing it out wide. Well, you mentioned uh, Wesley Wade and his continued effort to try and dig balls out here in the game, late stages of this game, I should say. Who else has impressed you for Wilmer Cabrera's team tonight? Uh, the outside backs, Shaquille Moore and John Riquejo, I thought were very dangerous for a good portion of the game. It was unfortunate that Riquejo had to step out for the cramps. And then Herbert Flores, I mean, every time he touches the ball, something good happens. He plays forward. He always makes the right decision. He plays the guy that's running onto it. Maybe only has one guy have, that he has to get through as opposed to two. I've really been impressed with him and, and uh, I'm really excited about a lot of these players in the U.S. team. And as for the French, I mean, I think they're the class of the tournament. Now, we got to watch Brazil and Turkey before and obviously both of those teams come in with a, a good reputation for being good soccer countries, but there's something about this French team. I mean, they didn't play their best tonight, but I think they're still going to get out of here with the result, and, and I think they're going to be the class of the tournament and the team to beat. Which, that last statement you just said, not playing your best but still getting results is oftentimes, you know, an indicator of how good a team indeed is. Ball across toward the back post. U.S. have a little bit of trouble clearing it. Secondary clearance comes out here for Dumbi. A nice little step over to create the window. Dancing on the ball, the corner of the 18, and then just has it stripped away. Baird, could this be the counter-attacking sequence? Flores could not find the first touch. And so the U.S. will likely turn their attention to Turkey, a game that we'll have for you here on Fox Soccer on Friday. Same start time, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. out on the West Coast. So our live coverage of the Nike International Friendlies will continue. Not done yet, though, just here. Just in the corner of the area, U.S. pleading for a whistle. 
But they're going to end up with a throw. Probably not a foul. Good non-call by the referee. Agreed. And Baird slipping through. 2-2! Two -two! You applauded Wesley Wade's efforts to continually dig the ball out. And he digs out an equalizer for the U.S. What an opportunistic, opportunistic goal by Wesley Wade. Take a look, long throw in here for Shaquille Moore. Corey Baird puts in a good spot. Balls right to Wesley Wade. And thank you very much, set Mr. Side Netting. Got herself a 2-2 game. And some real excitement and some hope for the U.S. in this tournament. The French, on the flip side, be incredibly disappointed. The three minutes was up, stoppage time. Give up a goal, just a lack of concentration. Something their coaching staff's gonna be very disappointed about. You know, Wilmer Cabrera, the head coach for the U.S. under 17s, was nothing but positive when talking about Wesley Wade. He was the golden boot winner in the AGS Cup in Spain a little more than a month and a half ago. And he comes up with a late equalizer here. Almost has to feel like a win for the U.S. Oh, absolutely. Anytime you're down, you can score late. Uh, it definitely feels like a win. You're feeling great about yourself and, and what you've done to get back into the game. Great finish by Wesley Wade. A lot of things, both positive and negatively, that the U.S. can uh, focus on as well as the French. And uh, I look forward to these teams making those proper fixes and creating some solutions to that moving forward in this tournament. Well, that's going to do it for our coverage here tonight from the Premier Sports Campus in Lakewood Ranch, Florida. But remember, we'll be back with you on Friday as the U.S. will take on Turkey, followed by Sunday's game against Brazil. Better late than never, as they say. And in this case, Wesley Wade came in at just the right time to provide the equalizer. 2-2 is your final between the U.S. and France here from the Premier Sports Campus. On behalf of Jimmy Conrad and the rest of our Fox Soccer crew, my name is Mark Rogandino. We appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you for the Nike International Friendlies on Friday. Whoa! Whoa!